Hello class, in this short video we will discuss about how noise can affect a comparator and how to eliminate the particular noise using a positive feedback on the comparator. So for the circuits we talk about inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier and a buffer will not use a positive feedback instead it will use a negative feedback. And the comparators that we talk about as a zero level detector and a non-zero level detector will not use a positive feedback and it's an open loop system. So today's circuit we will talk about how comparator can be used to remove the noise using a positive feedback along with the hysteresis. So noise on the comparator operation. So no matter what, all the circuits are going to be affected by the noise. The reason why we are much more concentrating using a comparator because it is trying to compare the signals, especially if the input signal is around or if the input signal fluctuates around the reference signal, then because of the open loop gain of an amplifier is very, very high, the op amp will change its states continuously. So let's look at what is meant by that. Let me take an input signal. So I have some ex have some signal that is affected by noise and that's the type of the signal I got. Instead of a smooth pause to half cycle of a sine wave, I got some ripples. Let's say for example, we want to use a reference value around that region. That's why that's what going to be our reference value. Let's say our signal, we want to compare that signal with an hysteresis. So, my reference is like that one and the input signal is fluctuating around the reference. If I observe how comparator will work, the signal from point 0 or the origin to a point A will lie lies below the reference. So let's think about, okay, this is going to be a non-inverting comparator, meaning that V positive is getting the input signal and V negative, that is where the reference is. So from 0 to A, so from origin to the point A, the input signal less than the reference. So input is applied to the V positive less than the V reference. So meaning that V negative is going to be greater. So if the V negative is greater, the output of the operational amplifier will go back to negative peak or the negative maximum. Right? So if I'm observing from point A to this particular point, I'm going to call as a point B. So from A to B, Vn is greater than the reference. So if the Vn is greater than the reference, meaning that V positive is growing to be greater than the V negative because input signal is applied to a positive and the reference is at the negative terminal. So V positive is going to be greater than the V negative. So in that case, the output of the comparator at that particular point will shoot towards the maximum value of VCC. So I'm going to consider it as an ideal lap amp. So I'm going to be that's going to be VCC and this is going to be negative VCC. And from point A to B, that's where the signal is. If I observe the next portion from B to C, the input signal falls below the reference. So it fluctuates and that's only and again it's going to go from zero to up and it's going to continue depending upon whether the input signal falls below the reference or depending upon the input signal falls above the reference. So as you can clearly see because if the as long as the input signal fluctuates around the reference voltage above or below I can see there is a lot of distortion exists in that particular position.
so instead of having a smooth sine wave in in any case if my input signal is had a lot of effect in terms of a noise then definitely the output of a comparator will fluctuate from positive VCC to negative VCC and negative VCC to positive VCC. So let's look back. And sometimes the input signal to a comparator may be vary due to the noise superimposed on the input signal that can be results in any unstable output. As we saw, the signal is going to go from positive VCC to a negative VCC, negative VCC to positive VCC as quickly as possible because there is some fluctuations because of the noise at the input signal. So to avoid this particular noise, we deploy a mechanism called as an hysteresis on this comparator. So instead of having, instead of defining only one reference signal, hysteresis will define two reference signals which are called as a upper trigger point and a lower trigger points. Sometimes it can be referred as upper threshold point or the lower threshold point, simply UTP and LTP. So the basic concept is by using a positive feedback on a comparator, we can perform this hysteresis. So what the hysteresis can basically give us is it is incorporated by adding a positive feedback which creates the two switching points. So instead of having only one reference point, so far we used comparator with only one reference point, whether it is going to be grounded in zero level detector and whether that reference coming from a voltage divider in non-zero level detector. So right now we are going to use two reference levels which are going to be UTP or LTP. So after one trigger point is crossed, it becomes inactive and the another one becomes active. So let's look at how op amp along with an hysteresis can be used. So before we do that one, we're going to just quickly recap this diagram here. So let's say this signal is an input signal which was affected by the noise. As you can see here, the signal around this regions is affected by the noise. Because the signal fluctuates around the reference voltage. So as long as the signal fluctuates around the reference, comparator output voltage will be fluctuated very fastly. So as long as if the signal is greater than the reference, I will see a positive voltage. The moment at which the signal crosses, so which is going to be in this region, with the signal crosses below the reference, the output voltage will shift to a negative potential. And after that, it's going to go back to the positive and negative. And this is how the signal or the output of the comparator affected by the noise. So hysteresis is one of the uh, as long as if the input voltage will fluctuate around the reference that will create some serious problems in the circuit design when we are using op amp as a comparator. So let's look at how to avoid that hysteresis. Let us consider this particular circuit. So I have an input voltage of 3 volts peak, VCC 5 volts and negative 5 volts. And I saw that there is an voltage divider network along with R1 and R2 connected at the output sign, but the feedback using is a positive feedback. Again, this is an voltage divider network. We are already aware of how to use this voltage divider network. So the values of UTP and LTP are going to be calculated using these formulas. So in this case, UTP is basically R2, which is 2K in this example over R1 plus R2, which is 7K times V out maximum for an ideal operational amplifier the maximum output voltage is nothing but the VCC. So that's going to be around 1.4 volts. Same thing goes here. So it's a 2K over 7K but in this case because it's a lower threshold point that's a negative 5 volts and the LTP is negative 1.7 volts. So now let's look at how the signal varies, how the output signal is going to be look like. So now our input signal is going to be a simple 3 volt peak signal. So the positive is going to be 3 volts and the negative voltage is going to be negative 3. 
So this is going to be a voltage signal with respect to the time. The upper threshold point is going to be located at 1.4 rolls. So this is where that UTP point is located. And the LTP point is going to be at the negative 1.4 volts. So obviously, uh, the UTP LTP values are going to have a same magnitude, but it's an opposite polarity. So it's going to be here uh, the upper threshold point and here where we will see the lower threshold point of the signal. So let's look at how to draw this output waveform, how the signal is going to be affected. So this is going to be an output waveform. At the very first stage, at the zero point, the output is going to be zero. Let's think that the up pump output voltage is going to be greater than zero also because initially the output is going to be zero. So the voltage, if the output is going to be zero initially, and this voltage drop at point A is going to be zero and V positive is going to be zero volts. And the signal input signal is applied to an inverting terminal. That means the output is going to be out of phase. So V negative is greater than the V positive. So then definitely a negative voltage appears. Right. So if the signal rises, at the input terminal remember the input is applied at an inverting terminal as the signal rises then the v input is greater than the output voltage because the input voltage is going to be positive if the output is close to zero initially everything is going to be zero if as long as the input increases the output voltage will be negative voltage or the negative v set or approximately negative 5 volts in this case because I'm considering the VCC is going to be 5 volts, the maximum output voltage is negative 5. So the output voltage is negative 5 here. So that means the output voltage, if it's so that is going to, I'm looking at an LTP value. So the reference instead of 0, the reference now changes to negative 1.4 volts. So that as the input signal rises, so initially it is three, 0 volts as the input signal going up, the V negative is going to be greater. So it's not going to shift the output. So it's going to be keep going until the LTP. So at, at this particular point, both are going to be equal. But the moment at which the input signal falls below the negative 1.4 volts. Let's call as the input signal is stays around 1 negative 1.5 volts. As long as the input signal is negative 1.5 volts, the reference voltage is negative 1.4 volts. So the output voltage will becomes plus 5 volts because V positive right now is greater than the V negative. So the output voltage will rise to volts a plus 5 volts and it's going to be keep continuous so let's me expand this one for another cycle and it is going to be constant and as long as it is going to be at the LTP so at the LTP another LTP both voltages are going to be equal because both are going to be at negative 1.5, so approximately I will bet back to zero. As long as the signal crosses the LTP, so the voltage is going to be false below the negative 1.4 volts. So definitely the output signal will go back and gives you a constant and the same signal is going to repeat it. 